Hi, I'm Tech Sergeant Ryan Zamudio with the 752nd Medical Squadron, March Air Reserve Base, California. Today I'm going to be showing you the calibration and PM procedures for the N-Flow blood fluid warmer manufactured by General Electric. The N-Flow blood fluid warmer is a compact portable unit capable of running on either outlet or battery power. It provides a constant fluid temperature output of 40 degrees Celsius at a flow of 200 milliliters per minute. These units are primarily used by rescue squadrons to provide in-flight and on-site therapy to patients. Uh, you also need some form of a calibrated temperature monitor uh, for the purpose of testing this unit. I like using the multimeter with attached thermocouple. You'll need containers uh, not only to catch the fluids for recycling into your testing, uh, but you can also use it to check the flow rate. Um, all you need is this unit with a, a graduated cylinder or a collection canister with measurement markings and a stopwatch. You're also going to need a, a source of hot water and a source of cold water and these are going to be used to add a little bit um, to raise or lower the temperature of your testing fluid. You'll need an IV bag as your source for fluid or you can also use a feeding bag. I prefer the feeding bag because it has a wider mouth and an open closed top. You also need to fashion a test set using a standard um, patient set. You can find these procedures in the service manual itself. And you'll need to get a hold of uh, one of the heating blocks. Uh, this is the cartridge that snaps in and this side goes against the heating element. If you do happen to use sodium chloride solution, um, it's going to get all over the place and when it dries it does leave a salt residue all over all of your equipment so make sure you give this a good rinsing uh, prior to putting it into the unit so it doesn't skew your temperature results all right so now we get to the unboxing the unit itself here you have an empty box all right this is the uh the actual warmer itself. So when you have the serially controlled item, you want to be referring to the warmer. This is going to be providing power to the warmer to control the temperature. So we're going to set this up on the pole clamp doesn't matter uh, which way you have it up or down, uh, it, it all works the same. I'm going to clamp it to your pole. Next you're going to hook up the power cord. When you're hooking up the warmer to the controller, remove that rubber protective boot. And this has a sort of a cam lock system. You're going to find which end is the bigger of the two prongs and that's going to be your index um, you're going to put it in, twist it and that locks it in keeps it from coming out and then the warmer unit will snap right there into that plastic holder alright the next items are some that you may or may not see um, when these get distributed these are generally the responsibility of the user and unless there are any problems with them, uh, you won't be seeing them as part of your regular PM. Uh, what these are is this is the uh, this unit is the battery charger. The inflow system can run off of batteries, as you can see, are very similar to what you would use uh, in a a power drill or a light tool. Uh, these are um, these are 28 volt batteries. So as I already said, these are 28 volt um, battery units. Uh, every battery has its own little status indicator. And you can check that just by pressing that button. Uh, as you can see, they're both at approximately half charge right now. Um, so the good thing about these is they're lithium ion. They won't develop a charge memory. So feel free place these on the charger and uh, at any point uh, the charger just brings it straight up 
to its charge it doesn't waste time in uh, discharging then recharging like some battery conditioners also do and so the first step in our checklist is we're going to ensure that all cords and connectors are in good condition and void of any cuts cracks or frays check your connections and like I already said you want to make sure that uh, that this area is clean likewise you're going to make sure that your heating element surface is clean Alright, so the next step is to ensure that the unit's clean and void of any cracks or other signs of damage. And what they're talking about is the housing itself. Right, so next we're going to set up for the performance test. Uh, the first thing we need to do is provide a minimum of a half liter of solution um, that is at 20 plus or minus 2 degrees Celsius. So, as you can see, um, the water that's already in there, I'll add a little bit more but we're right at the top end of that window in terms of temperature make sure you can see that so what we're going to do to tweak our temperature down towards the center of our uh, our window is we're going to add some colder tap water see if that does the trick see if we can drop this down below 21 alright so to insert the cartridge you take the heater out of its holder and you just split it open like that. Now these cartridges are keyed, they only go in one direction and that's going to automatically be in the uh, in the flow of um, the water. You can see an arrow pointing down this way. And so you place it in there and then you just slide these closed. Place the whole thing back in the holder. And you're going to flip on the unit switches over here on the side right next to the power cord so the next thing you need to do is open up your clamp for your line and prime your line give that a couple squeezes to fill your drip chamber and burp the air out and then crimp that off alright so once you get your line primed you're going to open up the clamp and let it flow and with this full open that will give you close to your 100 milliliters a minute plus or minus 20 and what we're looking for is an output of 40 degrees celsius plus or minus 2 38.8 38.7 and we're there in the window Alright, so for the next portion, what we need to do is we need to test the over temperature alarm. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to take the water from our coffee pot and we're going to pour it in here. And we need this to be above 50 degrees when it goes in because it's going to lose a lot of heat very quickly. Get the line to purge all the way through. Once you pour it in your hot water, you're going to swap over cassettes. As you can see, this light right here indicates your temperature based on its color. We're going to see it go eventually to red and it's going to alarm. Once we start it flowing, we want to measure the output temperature while making note of what the input temperature still is and it should alarm within 20 seconds so let's start that now open up your clamp and there we go the alarm trips alright so the last portion of the test is electrical safety testing and what we're looking for here is the safety of the patient uh, by not getting shocked through the, uh, the fluid by stray current. So you need to have uh, any kind of safety tester set up. Plug the unit into the safety tester. Turn the unit on and that in turn will power your 
fluid warmer. And then this is what we're looking for is the case leakage. Of course you can always, uh, you can check your power cord resistance by putting your Kelvin cable. You can go directly to the pole clamp if you have to because the grounding point is at the pole clamp. You are going to switch over to external lead. Make sure your polarity is in normal. And then you're going to open the ground to see what the leakage is. And you can see we have 133 microamps. Well below the threshold of 300. You can switch over to your ground conductor and see what the leakage is there. Most of the time those are both the same if you have a good ground. Next you're going to detach your Kelvin cable. And then start your stream again. And it doesn't matter what you use, hot or cold water for this, all you need is water running through the heater itself. And you're going to switch back to external lead and put this in the stream and now you're testing to see how much leakage is going through to the fluid stream and raise your ground. And you can see we have 23.1 microamps and that is good. So the last thing we need to check is for the battery operation of the unit. For this you're just going to disconnect your AC power line. You're going to take your battery and put it onto the unit right there and make sure it powers up. As a secondary check you can also take your thermocouple cable and get it to run through with the cold water side make sure it's providing adequate heating at the same temperature. So the last thing you need to do is get your checklist all filled out and uh, file that away for documentation purposes. Um, as you can see the unit itself takes longer to set up for testing than it does to actually test the unit. Uh, so with that in mind I would suggest getting all of the units that you have within your responsibility together uh, set up your test equipment one time and then knock out the entire inventory of testing. A couple quick notes about the unit on safety and troubleshooting. Um, for troubleshooting, in the case that you aren't getting the determined output uh, that you should be, uh, start with your cassette. These cassettes, um, they're metal inside and if you have sodium chloride or other fluids going through it, they're going to corrode quickly. Um, as you know, corrosion is uh, not the best conductor so it's going to keep that heat from going up through the bottom off of your uh, heat plate and going to your fluid so that's going to knock off your uh, your readings by maybe a degree or two and just push you outside of that um, that acceptable window um, also for safety uh, these units are strapped to the patient's arm so while they're receiving therapy the uh, heater unit is secured to the patient's arm um, by means of a rubber strap. There's been uh, a recall of these units recently um, and all it did was insert some instructions to make sure that you take care um, during testing procedures and administering therapy to not burn the patient physically. Uh, so if there's any portion of that, um, that overheat check that goes awry, make sure you pull the unit from service. So that's all I have regarding this unit. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can email me. I'm Tech Sergeant Ryan Zamudio. You can find me on the global address listing. Thank you.